Okay, so now we talked about how to factor by pulling out the greatest common factor, how to factor by grouping, how to factor trinomials, and now we'll talk about the last technique is how to factor the difference of two squares and the difference again subtraction. So if I have a squared minus b squared, there's my difference right there. That's going to equal two factors, a plus b and a minus b. So the big key word is factoring the difference of two squares. You want the difference and you want two squares. And so the squares you should have memorized or you should be able to recognize them from the P.3 section. So let's look at example 7. I have x squared minus 36. Here is the difference. That subtraction sign means different. And x squared is a square and 36 is a square. So we have a difference of two squares. If that is true, then we have two factors, and we should have different signs in the middle. If I go back here, there are different signs. And then we're going to put x and x here because x squared comes from x times x. And then we put 6 here because 6 times 6 makes that 36. Now, if you want to check this, go ahead and multiply or pull this out, and you would get x squared, that would be first, outer would give you minus 6x, inner would give you plus 6x, and last would give you a positive times the negative is negative, and then 6 times 6 is 36. So now if you look at this carefully, these two terms cancel out because negative 6 plus 6x is just 0. So I get x squared minus 36. And that's the original problem right there. Okay, so this is correct. Okay, now I'll go to part B in this example. I have 81x squared minus 49. And you're looking for the difference. The difference is right there. Of two squares, well, 81x squared, 81 and x squared are both perfect squares and 49 same thing right there. So we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to write two factors. You want different signs in the middle. How do I remember that? If different the two squares, you want different signs. That's how I remember that. Okay, so now the first position you want a 9x and a 9x because 9x times 9x will give you the 81x squared. In the second position you want a 7 and a 7 because that will give you the uh, minus 49 or the, the negative 49 that you need. Okay, I'll give you double check this. First times first will give you 81x squared. Outer times outer will give you minus 63x. Inner times inner is plus 63x. So minus 63x plus 63x gives you zero. So we have no x term. And then last times last, positive 7 times negative 7 is the negative 49. There's a the minus 49 right there. Now, here where a lot of students will say, well, can I factor the sum of two squares? And I tell them, well, can you? Try it. So here I have x squared, and here's a sum, and 36 is another square. So a lot of times students will say, well, let's make it x plus 6, x plus 6. And that's questionable, will that work? Well, before all that, you get x squared plus 6x plus another 6x plus 36. You get x squared plus 12x plus 36. Does that equal this? No. So put a big x in that. Okay. And then some people will say, well, why don't we do x minus 6, x minus 6? And I go, let's go ahead and pull that out. You get x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 36. So we get x squared minus 12x plus 36. So we, we get the plus 36 in both of these problems. But here I have minus 12x. That's not the same thing as this original problem here. So that wouldn't work. And then we can't do the x plus 6, x minus 6, because if I pull that out, we'll get x squared minus 6x plus 6x minus 36 which would give me x squared, these two out to 0, minus 36, and that's not the same thing as this either, so no, no, no. Okay. 
So the big answer is, can you factor the sum of two squares? If you see the sum of two squares, you cannot factor it. Okay, so here we have example eight, and this is inside of the repeated factorization. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, and in example um, seven, none of these had GCFs. I forgot to look for those, but no GCFs in all of these. I forgot to look for that, so luckily there, was, well, there wasn't one, but had there been one, then I would have run into some trouble. Okay, so in example eight, let's not forget that. If there's GCF, uh, there's no number factor in common between the two terms. And this one had x in, and this one doesn't, so there is no GCF. Okay. Now I look at this, and I see the difference, and this is the square, and then that's the square. So what I'm going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and write my two factors. One positive and one negative in the middle, or one plus sign and one minus sign in the middle. And I have to put x squared here and an x squared here in the first position because x squared times x squared will give you x to the fourth. Okay. And then the last position put nine and nine because that if I boil this all out, I will get this. Now, if you look at this carefully, you'll see if I look at this first factor here, this is the sum of two squares. I can't do anything with that in terms of factoring anymore. But if I look at this carefully, this factor here, I have a difference, and these are two squares, I can factor this more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop down this factor, because I can't do anything with this factor. But this right here, the difference of two squares. This is x plus 3 and x minus 3. And there's my final answer. Okay, so now let's talk about strategy for factoring a polynomial. And whenever you have a factoring problem, you should be doing um, a couple steps. And the first step is the one that I forget sometimes, I do forget it, so you just gotta put it in your memory to always do this, to always look for a great common factor. If there is one, pull it out. And something I haven't mentioned yet, but if you have a leading coefficient, is negative, pull out negative 1 or the negative sign with the GPO. Okay. So um, I think we'll see that. That, that example or that um, idea when we do the next example. So if you have a lean coefficient negative, you're going to pull that negative 1 out or the negative sign with the GCF. Okay, that's always the first step. So always look for the greatest common factor. The second thing you want to do is you want to count your terms. If there are two terms, You're going to ask, is it the difference of two squares? If it's the difference of two squares, you know how to factor that. You can do a squared minus b squared equals a plus b and a minus b. Okay, if it's three terms, Factor by trial and error. Now use trial and error when the leading coefficient is 1. Or by AC method. Now use that when the leading coefficient was not 1. And if there are four terms, I say uh, the last one here. I said factor by trial and error or AC method if possible. Forget that. Sometimes you can't do it, but if possible. And if it's four terms, try to factor by grouping. Remember, we looked at the first two terms and plot the common factor. The second two terms, put common factor.
Okay, so that's the second step is to count how many terms you have left and then deal with it um, based on how many terms you have. And the third step, this one is one that um, will catch your mistakes, hopefully, if you have any. If you have time, check by distributive property. Or by foil. And we, we do that on a couple of problems that we had. Okay, the next example is factor a polynomial completely. So this is going to go back to the step that I just wrote down, the strategies for factoring a polynomial. So in this problem here, I'm going to look at negative 2x to the third minus 8x squared minus 8x. And the first thing you always look for are the greatest common factors. So is there a greatest common factor here? I hope you see this one right away because these are all even numbers. So at minimum, two should come out. Sometimes it's something more than two, but since I have a two right here, I think the, the GCF is going to have a two in it. Now notice how the leading coefficient is negative. So you're going to pull out not only the two, but you can pull out the negative two. Okay. Then I also notice they all share x in common, and the smallest number of x's they have are one. They so just pull an x out. So. I have negative 2x. That's my greatest common factor. Once I do that, I have x squared left, so that would give me the negative 2x cubed left, plus 4x, and then plus 4. All that would give me that back. And you can do the distributive property to check to make sure that would give you this back, and it does. Then you're going to count how many terms you have. This negative 2x is still there. I'm going to count how many terms I have. One, two, three. So these three terms here, i got to see whether they factor any more by using the um, trial and error method or do I use the AC method. In this case, the lean coefficient here is one. So I'm going to go ahead and do trial and error. Put x and x here. And the two numbers that multiply giving positive four, but add to give me negative four. I'm going to put two and two here. And I want to multiply to give me positive 4. So let's make them both positive. And if I do that, it would not give me this. So let's make them both negative. That would give me x squared minus 2x minus another 2x minus 4x. There it is. And then plus 4. It looks like this is your correct answer. Okay. And some students would say, well, these are the same factors. And that happens sometimes. So you could do this. And write this out and think that factor is squared. There's two of them. Okay, in the next part of the example here, I have to look for the greatest common factor first. And I see a 5 and 5, so I know at least 5 comes out. And the leading coefficient is negative, so I'm going to pull out a negative 5. And they have x in common. Pull out an x. So I have x squared minus, because negative times a negative will give you that positive. Uh, 9. Okay. And so now, can I factor this anymore? This is two terms. It looks like the difference of two squares. So I'm going to go ahead and write x plus 3, x minus 3, and I bring down the minus 5x. Okay. There's your answer there. And there's your answer here. Now, I did do an example like this. Let me go ahead and squeeze this in, maybe on the top of the next page. If you have a problem that looks like this, I'm making this up, I have negative um, x squared plus 4. If I were to factor this, the first thing you look for is the greatest common factor. And you might look at this and say, uh, there's no number in common and there's no x in common. But notice how the leading coefficient is negative. So what you want to do is pull out the negative 1. And when you do that, you have x squared minus 4. And then when you factor this, the difference of 2 squared, you get x plus 2, x minus 2. And then we bring down the negative 1. And I'm going to drop down that 1 and just drop the 1 off and then just put the negative sign out there. So we don't really need that 1 there. It's understood there's a 1 right here, although we don't put it there. Okay, 
On your own, you have these problems. If you are in my class, I'm going to go over these problems first thing in class. If you are in my online class, you can go ahead and do these. And if you need the answer, just go ahead and email me and I'll give you the answers. And that's the end of factoring.